Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and special guest today, Flambass. Yes, Flambass has sent me some more replays, but don't worry, he's not going to be sailing up the middle of two brothers in a battleship today. I figure we've just about kicked that one to death. Today we have something slightly different. Flambass is in one of his favourite battleships, the French Tier 9 Premium, the Jean Bart, which is basically the Tier 8 Richie Lulu, except better in every way that matters. The Jean Bart does, however, share one very important thing in common with its Tier 8 sister ship, and that's the guns, and not just the gun configuration, with two turrets at the front, both with four gun barrels. They are, in fact, the same 15 inch or 380 millimeter guns as found on the Richie Lulu at Tier 8. They have the same ammunition, the same muzzle velocity, although. Shots fired by the Jean Bart do seem to enjoy a slightly better shot dispersion, and the Jean Bart does have a faster reload of 26 seconds, and access to a gun reload booster which halves the reload for 20 seconds, but they are still just 15 inch guns in a tier 9 battleship. And the reason why this is important, and one of the things that can make the Jean Bart tricky to master, is because if you don't understand exactly what you can and cannot overmatch with a 15 inch armor piercing shell in a tier 9 battleship, you're likely to be wasting a lot of shots fired from these guns. It's not that the Richie Lulu at tier 8 doesn't also have this problem, but it's a tier lower, so it's likely to run into far more ships that it can overmatch with its armor piercing shells than it can't. The same cannot be said of the Jean Bart. To put this into practical terms, what it means is that some tier 8, 9 and 10 cruisers can bounce your armour piercing shells off their bows or stern if sufficiently angled, and some cannot. Now if you're in a battleship armed with at least 16 inch guns, like every other tier 9 or 10 battleship in the game with the exception of the Alsace, which also has 15 inch guns, these distinctions become completely irrelevant. 25mm, 27mm, doesn't matter, a 16 inch armour piercing shell can overmatch both. But if you have 15 inch guns like the Jean Bart and the Alsace, you have to actually know which of the cruisers that you're shooting at have 25mm of bow plating, which you can overmatch, or 27mm of bow plating, which you cannot overmatch. So playing the Jean Bart isn't quite as straightforward as almost every other battleship at this tier. You actually have to understand your opponents, or at the very least understand the armour thresholds of your opponents, because if you don't, chances are fairly good that you're going to be wasting a lot of ammunition on targets that you just cannot overmatch. Well, of course, if they're going to just sail broadside onto you like that, it doesn't really matter whether they're in a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, or a tier 9 battleship. <laughs> That was a, well, it wasn't a comprehensive paddling, but it's probably one that the Ismo is in no rush to repeat. Flambass using the reload booster there, just to get an extra sneaky shot in, and oh, crap. There's something else that you need to know about the Jean Bart. There's the USS Black, premium tier 9, uh, basically a Fletcher-class American destroyer. And the Jean Bart has a lot of secondaries. But they're not very good, because the overwhelming majority of the Jean Bart secondaries, you can see Flambass has activated his speed boost here, and if that had been anything other than the Black, he probably wouldn't have gotten away with this, because the Black's torpedoes are very slow, and the Jean Bart's pretty quick, especially with the speed flag and the speed boost. There's his first kill. The Black seriously underestimated him. Didn't do a lot of damage to the Black with his um, secondaries, however, despite the ship being well within the impressive secondary range of the Jean Bart, which I believe by default is seven kilometers and with a secondary build, which I would not recommend for reasons that I'm about to explain, can be buffed up to 10.6 kilometers. And it's because the overwhelming majority of the secondary gun batteries on the Jean Bart are 100 millimeter guns. And a 100 millimeter gun, unless it's on a Japanese destroyer, can only penetrate 16 millimeters of armor. Tier 8, 9 and 10 destroyers have 19 millimetres of armour. So you may set a lot of fires with the secondaries on the Jean Bart, but you're unlikely to do a huge amount of direct damage. On the other hand, 
The Jean Bart really doesn't enjoy having high explosive fired back at it of just about any calibre. The Jean Bart's armour is basically 32mm everywhere, except for the superstructure, which is 19mm, but even the Jean Bart's belt armour is 32mm. Again, what this means to you in practical terms is all heavy cruisers and all light cruisers with the IFHE skill. So basically all heavy cruisers and all light cruisers that aren't British are going to do full damage to you with their high explosive shells. Now the Jean Bart isn't of course unique in only having 32mm of bow and stern plating in a tier 9 battleship, but it's fairly unique at only having 32mm of armour everywhere. And it also isn't exactly blessed with an overabundance of health in the first place, having a health pool of 69,000, which puts it only above HMS Lion, as far as Tier 9 battleships are concerned. But the Lion has something that the Jean Bart does not, that Royal Navy Super Heal, which means the Lion doesn't really care if it's constantly getting hit by high explosive shells, it can always heal it back. The Jean Bart? Not so much. Another peculiar feature of only having 32mm of belt armour is that the Yamato and Musashi's 18-inch guns can also overmatch your belt, not just your bows or your stern, which basically makes it impossible to angle against a Musashi or a Yamato. And the Jean Bart is tier 9, so it's likely to see a few Musashis and Yamatos. Now, none of this is meant to paint the Jean Bart as a bad ship. It definitely is not. It's actually a very good ship. But hopefully it just illustrates that there are certain almost unique characteristics about this ship. The fact that it only has 32mm of armour pretty much everywhere. And that it's a tier 9 battleship with 15, not 16 inch guns. Hopefully serves to illustrate that you kind of have to know what you're doing in the Jean Bart to a degree that you don't really have to know in just about every other tier 9 battleship that isn't the Alsace, which also shares a lot of these characteristics. 32mm of armour just about everywhere and 15 inch guns. But if you do understand that your ship is horribly vulnerable to high explosive fired by just about everything, and is limited in what it can effectively damage with its 15 inch armor piercing shells, if you do understand these things and know how to work around them, uh, you will find that the Jean Bart is capable of doing monstrous amounts of damage. And because while they may only be 15 inch shells, they have very high velocity, they have very good penetration, they have a short reload, and they're reasonably accurate. As you can see, Flambas looking to get a repeat of what he just did to the Boise against the York over there. The Boise shells still in the air despite the ship being sunk. Unfortunately, the York managed to go undetected and therefore break target lock right before Flambas fired, which means those shells are unlikely to actually hit. And the York does manage to get another punishing high explosive salvo in. Um. In the meantime, if anybody else on the team would like to sink something, I'm pretty sure Flambass wouldn't be offended. Yeah, you know you're in deep trouble when you're down six ships and the only other person on your entire team that's managed to actually justify their place at the table with a kill is a bottom tier Ashitaka. That York is still up there to the north and still, very annoyingly, probably on full health and still has 210mm guns. And Flambass is now surface spotted. So that's interesting. Can't see what it is. There doesn't appear to be anything in range. Certainly not the Gneiser now over there. He's well outside of detection range. At least for now. Until Flambass fires the guns. Shots out. Could have been the Ibuki. We're going to have a pop quiz right after this message from our sponsors. Bang! Kill number three. <laughs> There goes the Gneiser now. Can the Jean Bart's 15-inch guns overmatch the bow armour of the Ibuki? The answer is no. The Ibuki, while not being famous for having a lot of armour, does have 27mm of bow plating, so the Jean Bart's 15-inch guns cannot overmatch it. There's something else the Jean Bart's guns cannot overmatch. It's another Jean Bart.
Although, to be completely fair, only the Masashi and the Yamato would be able to overmatch the bows of that thing. Now, how much attention do you think that Jean Bart is paying? Because while Flambas is no longer detected, he's not in direct line of sight, and he's lobbing shells. Ooh, that actually looks quite good. Eh, eh, could have been better. There are the torpedoes from the Ibuki, which is of course the reason why Flambas didn't go around that corner, and is in fact reversing. But the fact that the Ibuki knew he was here, fired torpedoes at him, the fact that he was detected when shooting at and killing Leganizer now, means that anybody paying even the slightest bit of attention to the minimap must be aware that there's a Jean Bart around the side of this island. So, just exactly how much attention do you think that enemy Jean Bart has been paying to anything that isn't right in front of him? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's kind of... yeah. Reload booster? Yep, he's using the reload booster. And this guy's just going herp a derp a derp but Oh, who put that battleship there? And he's lost one of his gun turrets, which is a big problem in the Jean Bart, because it only has two to begin with. So he's just kissed goodbye to 50% of his firepower. Which means that even if he uses his damage control, and let's face it, at this point he doesn't really have a lot to lose by not using it, that turret is still going to have to reload from scratch. Is he going for the ram? Flambas is backing up in anticipation of it. Yes, he is. There's the turn. He's coming towards him. But he's not going to get close enough. <laughs> nope. Not even close. And that, boys and girls, that utter buffoon... <laughs> with zero situational awareness. He's on the winning team. <laughs> Which hopefully puts into perspective for you just exactly how much Flambas' team sucked in this match. That Jean Bart was the second worst player on his team. And yet, he's still going to finish this match with more experience than all but two members of Flambas' team. Flambas being one of them, the other being a tier 7. And don't forget, this is a tier 9 battle, so Flambas has a bit of a mountain to climb here. Because in the 30 seconds or so it took me to explain exactly how shit Flambas's team were, there's now only two of them left against seven enemies. And the other surviving ship on his team, the Lion, is down to the south, YOLOing into a crossfire between a Cleveland, North Carolina, Izumo, and Akatsuki. So, before too long, Flambass is likely to be the only ship left alive on his team. And since I'm assuming that he has no ambition to be the only player left alive on his team against seven enemies, he's going to have to get his finger out. He's going to have to try hard. Perhaps even try harder. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try hard with a vengeance. Can you see what I did there? Yeah, don't worry, I'll get my coat. Uh, the reload booster is up. He really needs to kill that Ibuki. He's got very little health left. He's on fire. The reload booster is up. And he does kill the Ibuki. But not before the Ibuki gets another salvo off and shaves off even more of his increasingly slim looking health pool. He has been out of heals for quite some time, so all of that health that's currently burning away to the fire, he's not going to get any of that back. There's the York. Now the York is a tier 7 cruiser, so it has 25 millimeters of bow plating, which means these 15 inch armor piercing shells are going to be able to cut through that like a hot knife through butter. No problem. So there's the Confederate to go with the Kraken Unleashed and the High Calibre. And the York's just been joined by a Kutuzov, who ooh, almost certainly has... Actually, does he have the IFHE skill? His high explosive shells don't seem to be doing a huge amount of damage. I don't think he does. Nevertheless, he's an easy kill, so we'll take it. Even if his HE wasn't doing direct damage, it can still set a fire, and a fire at this point would be a death sentence. The York, of course, has 210mm guns and doesn't need IFHE to do large amounts of high explosive damage. But hang on a second, Flambas, why are you accelerating? Aren't you inside the York's torpedo range? Well, yes he is. But the York's almost certainly already launched his torpedoes. So he's kicking in the engine boost. And, yep, successfully managed to anticipate the York's torpedoes. 
and with the already quick reload on the Jean Bart's guns combined with a massive adrenaline rush buff at this point he beats the York to the reload kill number seven 1605 health remaining technically 1604 more than he actually needs but he's going to need to do that four more times he's going to have to kill 11 of the 12 ships on the enemy team in order to drag this team kicking and screaming to a victory and frankly while I'm sure Flambas would have loved nothing more than to win this game after doing over 200,000 damage and sinking seven of the enemy, getting the high caliber Kraken Unleashed and Confederate Award, well, I just don't really think they deserved it. Clearly, Flambas should have been trying harder. <laughs> Possibly even trying hard with a vengeance. Jingles, you already did that joke. It's just as shit as it was the first time around. No, 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 you don't understand. The trick's in the repetition. The more often I say things, the funnier it gets. No jingles. No, it, it really doesn't. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a professional. Anyway, I think the less said about that result, the better. Although it's obvious that Flambass clearly wasn't trying hard enough. Nevertheless, I hope you all enjoyed watching it. Flambass, my commiserations. My one regret is that I didn't catch this match live as you were playing it because I'm sure your reaction would have been priceless. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> but I hope everybody at least enjoyed watching it here on YouTube because that's it for today. And as always, take care and I'll catch you next time.